Okay. All right. Hi, Michelle. It's lovely Hi. to see you. <laughs> yeah, lovely to see you, Kelly. Um, and obviously, a lot of people have got other things going on 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 this evening. So we'll we'll just get on with the with the meeting, and um, this will go up onto our group, the business support and inspiration group and um, possibly for the first couple I will put them in on the public <laughs> spectrum of of the arc education. I'm just going to share my screen to start off with and so welcome to the arc education. Oh crikey can you see that I have um, <laughs> I've done the dyslexic thing. <laughs> Instead of T A E, I've put T E A. <laughs> a T at the time, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I think I probably was. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> welcome to the Arc Education Business Support and Inspiration Meeting. <laughs> um, I'm just going to we'll run through quickly what we were going to do um in this meeting. And um, obviously, introductions are a little bit invalid tonight, but that's okay. We'll do that next time. Um, housekeeping, then talk about why this group. And then, Michelle, if you could have a wee little talk about branding and marketing. And um, we'll leave the brainstorming ideas for future meetings for next time as well. Okay, just oops, some housekeeping um, for when people do come on here. Um, conf confidentiality. Um, because this is basically a public forum, we ask that you don't share any sensitive information about yourself or others in this in this meeting. And the recordings, if you are a subscribing provider, you can access these recordings on our um, business support and inspiration Facebook group. And we'll probably do the first few we'll put on to the Arc Education, but after that, it will go into the group. And you have to be a subscriber to be part of that group. Um, the disclaimer, taking advice from these group sessions is entirely at your own behest. <laughs> and the ARC education and all participants deny any liability or responsibility for your choices and all actions. And discretion, I have the discretion to exclude anyone who is disrespectful or confrontational because we want to keep this a really safe collaborative space and etiquette when there's more people here <laughs> if they could use the electronic hand and and use the chat to ask questions and everyone mutes on me speaking and um, and that's when that's going to be really handy when we have hundreds of people on this call <laughs> okay why this group? Well, it fits in with the arts values of connection, compassion, support, and creativity. We really want the space to be a safe, um, inspiring space where people can share their knowledge and wisdom and um, also grow, grow in their own business acumen and how they how they conduct their business. Um, it's about collaboration rather than competition. I have been right from the very beginning of creating the ARC education. I've always said that I'm about collaboration. I'm not a I'm not a particularly competitive person. Um, I would rather work with people than against them. So that this is this is part of that, as they say here in New Zealand, co-papa or ether. Um, <clears throat> many providers 
are great at what they do, like if they're psychologists or teachers. Um, uh, sorry, that was just a friend saying that she will come in a, in a minute or two. <laughs> That's fine. Um, but when it comes to the business sides of things, these people often feel really isolated and inadequate. So they spend thousands and thousands of dollars um, hiring experts. And actually, much of the time, well, in my experience, they needn't. Um, these people around them who are not as um, fiscally driven <laughs> as most of these big companies and um, they will help. And also having a go yourself often reaps really good rewards, <laughs> I find. Um, I don't know about you, Michelle, do you agree with that? Oh, look, yeah, I do, actually. I, I think that you, you've got to give it a go, but there's, um, you know, there's certainly the experts out there that can absolutely assist in areas when you are challenged. So, mm, and yeah. sometimes the time spent trying to nut things out can be a costly expense to the business as well. So, yeah, yeah it's a bit of a chicken and the egg scenario, I think. But, yeah, absolutely, have a red hot go first. <laughs> And, and yes, when when I say you know they spend a lot of money on, I'm I'm talking about, I'm talking about these big, um companies that where you're basically a number and and I know because I have spent a few thousand dollars giving my money to these people and actually got no results at all or. Uh, you know, no return, and then I have worked with people like you and other people who are on the on the um directory and have reaped enormous rewards. You know, learned so much. It's that personal touch, yeah. um, that I'm talking about. So yeah, um, creating this group is trying to get rid of that isolation and getting us all to share our wisdom and experience and expertise and work together, you know, and all supporting each other. Um, and this is my way of giving back to a community that um, has given me so much in just two short years, you know. Um, so, yes, those, those, that is why <laughs> I created this group. Um so I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce Michelle, even though she <laughs> probably needs no introduction <laughs> because um yeah, she's sitting here, but <laughs> everybody else watching won't know won't know you, Michelle. So I've written a little bit thing, a little a little a few words. So, so I said I'd like to introduce Michelle Peel of Design Studio. Um, Michelle and I have been together in a wonderful group run by confidence coach Mary Scott, whom I highly recommend. <laughs> um, uh, for a year, it's, it's about a year now, isn't yeah. it, Michelle? Um, and Michelle has owned and run several highly successful businesses and has recently returned to her original passion of designing and marketing and supporting people. And her wisdom is deep <laughs> and her ability to tap into your essence and represent it in a brand is uncanny. So welcome, Michelle. Thank you. <laughs> so lovely to have you on here. And um, having worked with you for a for a little while now and I can very very honestly say that um it's been a great experience so <laughs> Michelle if you'd like to talk to us about branding first of all because it's so important and people actually often leave it to last when they bring when they go into a, a business 
and um, maybe a little bit about market. I mean, obviously, marketing is an enormous um, area, but how people use their brand to market would be a great start. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. And thank you for the lovely introduction. I'm, I'm very grateful. And I love working with you and I love working with people. It's, I guess where I'm at, I'm um, having had my own businesses. I, I felt that, you know, from being from the graphic design industry right from the get go when I first started my career, I've traveled a journey of uh, a couple of businesses since and I've done a big 360 and, and realized during those businesses that there's just a, a real shortage of assistance and help in the marketplace um, for businesses, like for entrepreneurs that you know have a passion and want to have that success. And um, so my personal touch. Please. Yeah, the personal touch, exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. That personal touch for me is I work intuitively with my clients and get to know them. And it's not about AI generated logos or anything. It's a personalized logo. Um, you already had your logo and, and people do already have their logos, um, but it's about bringing the brand together. So branding is, it is a bit of a, it is an art and it's about consistency in your brand. So um a lot of people, it's a, it's a bit like the magpie effect where they like the look of that and then they'll use this and they'll use that and they'll use this. And, you know, it's, it's sort of a, it is a thing and, and you know, it's fun see, seeing what people can put up on their, you know, social media pages. <laughs> but it's about, you know, getting a theme happening and people will resonate with you as a brand because of that. So, and they'll see you and, oh, that's, you know, that's Michelle the Design Studio or that's Kelly the Arc Education when they start seeing that consistency happening. So I can't speak high enough of how important that consistency is. And one of the things we really do for our clients is bring that together and and have a style guide which they can follow once that's all established. So they know they then know what fonts to use, they know what colours to use. So yeah, we basically set them up for a good mud map. <laughs> you muted. It would help if I unmute. Um, leading Rachel in. Rachel is um, a great friend and colleague of mine. Hi, Rachel. How are you? Hi, Rachel. <laughs> Terribly late, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> You're... You're the only other one that's that's here. So and thank then you very three. much for coming. <laughs> then there were three. I've heard a lot of I've heard a lot from Kelly about you, Michelle, and I'm it's on my list of things to do is to reach out to you. So oh, it's lovely. great to meet to you. <laughs> meet you uh, in person tonight. Well not in person, but well. we are, yeah. That's a yes. good start. Mm -hmm. Face to face, even if it is yeah. <laughs> cyber right. cyberspace. Um, Rachel, we've just had a, you might want to watch the, the video, um, up on the group once, yes. we've, once we've put it, but, um, put it up, but, um, Michelle has just been talking about your brand, basically how, how it's, it's representational of, of you. Yes. Um, is really really important in building confidence in your client or your clientele. Yeah, um, and Michelle, you 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 were saying that you work intuitively with people. Mm. When you say that, what do you mean by so working what, intuitively? Yeah, what yeah. I I have a an introductory conversation with my clients, and uh, generally it's for forty five minutes to an hour, and we we just chat. We just chat and we get to know each other. I understand them and their business and what their dreams and wishes are and where they want to see themselves mm. positioned. And and I, I I just have I have that ability to be able to understand the needs and wants. It's not about one one mold fits all. It's not at all like that. We we mm. basically um it's about intuitively getting to know you from a one on one basis 
each client's case is different and everyone's needs are different so mm -hmm. that we can cater for them all so I like to think of myself as a, a one-stop shop where we do you know we do everything in the sense of um you know, we can do landing pages, websites, banners, logos, and even print media. We can set you up with mm. if you want to get a brochure done, I can have that all designed up for you and then you just go and get it printed at your printers. So it's a one-stop scenario. Instead of having to go and, you know, you get your branding by an, a, an art studio or a, an mm. advertising agency and that, you know, mm. we can guide you and give you all of those tips and tricks and that. So Yeah. 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 Um. Rachel, your your experience with um the, with the whole website branding thing has been has been probably not a not it's a it's a very common experience, especially for you know solopreneurs or educators and as I said before before you came on, um one of the reasons for creating this group is because so many of us educators or providers um, are really good at what we provide, but not great with the business stuff because we're not, that's not our passion for, for a lot of people. It's not their passion. Um, their passion is what they're doing, you know, and um, so we tend to rely on others to, to guide us. But more often than not, the others are these big companies, you know, where you're you're, you're kind of a number, really. Um, so what's your what's your experience been? I think you've perfectly described it, Kelly. I didn't become I didn't train uh, in the middle of my life to become a Davis dyslexia facilitator so that I could become wise and resourceful with Facebook and search engine optimization and uh, Google ad words and all those mechanisms of trying to attract customers. Um, if I'd really thought it through, I would not have done what I've done, but I did it because I was passionate about the education side. You know, I've seen so many people in my life who've struggled with their version of neurodiversity and I came across something that I could see was really effective and I just wanted to do that. And mm -hmm. so I've been in business since uh, February 2020. And uh, if it was not for my personal resources, I would not be still in business. Um, it's been quite an interesting time, obviously, um, going into business and then hitting the you know, pandemic and everything was but a but pretty challenging. Mm -hmm. And I knew nothing. And and unfortunately, Kelly's probably the person who's no as a as a colleague and, and friend has probably told me more than most people around me about marketing. Mm -hmm. Um and I have been through a series of, you know, my first website was a bit of a fraught experience just getting it up. And I just got to the point where I stopped going back to the person to say it's not right. Do you know? I just, uh, so many iterations. Yeah. And I don't think I'm a particularly difficult person, but maybe I am. But I just went through so many iterations simply of the wording um, and I lost sight of the design. And then I ended up with a website which looked good on a computer, but didn't work on a phone. And but I just was at that point. It's like I actually have to get some customers here. So I kind of went with it, but it was never ideal. So then I was, persuaded to have another go with another organization and they've done some good things with it but again it it's the iterative process that kind of wears you down of mm. constantly having to read everything over and over finding the errors and stuff and so I lost sight of kind of the creative direction of where I wanted to go with it um and I got some initial help with my branding and but I, I feel it's well overdue to have an, a proper look at that and have it consistent. There's, there's parts of marketing that I've just never got, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, people say, it's all about your branding. I'm like, why? <laughs> you know, it's like, why is that important? And what could I do about it? And that piece has always been missing for me. It's the same trying to understand 
the value of search engine optimization and and the value of all of the social media stuff, which quite frankly leaves me cold. It's <laughs> Yeah. Until I actually connect with someone and then we have a chat, I think, oh, yeah, this is probably a good idea. But a lot of it feels like spitting into the wind. Yeah. Like, yeah. Honest. Don't mud at a brick wall. <laughs> yeah. And, and like, is there a smart way to do this? And um, yeah. So that's kind of been my journey. And I've been through two agencies with Google AdWords and I'm not happy with my current one because they can't answer my questions and I think I'm a pretty basic down to earth I don't ask big technical questions I ask, why did the graph suddenly do that do you know or <laughs> how come the phone hasn't rung for three months you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> really quite fundamental stuff and <clears throat> yeah you know, I'll and, say and... it's a, it's the dollar value you're not putting towards it well, then that, that's just the default answer. And I'm like, I'm happy, not really, but I'm willing. Happy is not the right word, but I'm willing to consider putting more money towards it. But uh, are we? is what we're doing right now effective? Because no. more money should not be the answer not all the time. Not, as, not necessarily the answer. Yeah. It's, the, it's the method and the technique. Yeah, and what I'm interested in is is I don't want to become a specialist in any of this, but I want to know enough that I can make a responsible and informed decision That's each right. time. And That's I feel right. I've kind of st been in the dark and it's really frustrating and it's expensive. And but Unfortunately, a lot of these marketing agencies will keep you in the dark, so you keep coming back and that's how they work. But that's yeah. where, where I, I know from my business experience, I've got the business knowledge so I've got the whole um, mm. aspect of what I understand where you want to go and how you could potentially get there. So it's not about, and it's about getting you taught and understanding how to do it yourself. It's about it's about teaching people to yeah. fish instead yeah. of giving them the fish, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. Or at least having enough knowledge to know that if you hand the fishing pole to someone else they're doing it right that's right <laughs> exactly. i'm willing to do i am willing to do that i'm willing to say here's you have responsibility for this aspect of my marketing but i need to know that what they're doing is is going to actually work and it not be more spit in the wind you know that's right absolutely i i i found personally i threw good money after bad when it came to google ads honestly it just never and it's so expensive um and uh, for us as solopreneurs or as small businesses honestly organic marketing is the way to go how do you feel about that michelle do you agree with that i totally agree with it that's how i've, I've built my design business so far you know it's mm -hmm. um and word of mouth word of mouth advertising and, yeah. and that's organic as well isn't it right. It is called organic, yeah. and, and it's about um, it's just it's just being consistent and and your story. Like people want to, people resonate with authenticity. People mm. want to work with people who are real. Mm. And it's about getting that story of yours out. You know, the authenticity is your advertising and your marketing organically. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you you've got to. The way I've um come to see it is that you've got to be like the matriarch. <laughs> you, <do. laughs> of, of, you know, or the patriarch if you're a man, man, but the matriarch of your business. That's right. Um, you know, you're nurturing other people, and and as educators of any kind. That's what you're doing. Um, there's a high, high degree of nurturing and, um, you know, compassion and all those those touchy feely words. Um, and if you don't genuinely show that or have that, um, I think it's it's a huge disadvantage to your business. That's exactly right. Yeah, in our, you know, in in the in the business world that we live in so I think that the challenge for me because I know that I I bring that 
in working with clients. Mm. Um, I feel like sometimes I end up leaving so much of that, you know, on, on the table with clients is how to then bring that through how I market or promote what I do. Um, it's quite a vulnerable position. Well, well, it is. It is. And I think I'm getting a bit more comfortable. You know, I've done some interviews with you and mm -hmm. I'm now leading a course and I did a webinar a few uh, about a month ago and mm -hmm. um, that was, you know, um, good practice and kind of being out there more with people and, and sharing a bit more about what I do and the difference it makes but um, sort of how, how to I guess communicate that in social media and particularly to my my sort of um, demographic okay. who may or, or may, may or may not be readers yeah, exactly um, yeah. often they're the parents of children with neurodiversities but they might be time poor or they're not much you know readers themselves or mm. and I tend to kind of write lots of long form stuff which really bores people to tears so <laughs> it's about capturing them in that three seconds that they see it on social media yeah yeah without it being kind of like a rah-rah thing because that's really not my no. style but no. it's yeah how how to um Oh. Yeah, so, so someone someone shared over the weekend about from the course that I'm leading, co-facilitating co at the moment with a colleague, and this woman shared, she said, I've, I've got a bit of a reputation as for snapping at my children when they annoy me and they're quite hyperactive. And you kind of can get that as a parent. Mm. and she, But she was quite vulnerable in the way that she shared it. And then she said, so I, I practiced the tool that you taught us last week, and which is about kind of, relaxing your mind and body and um she said my children came home and did their usual thing of scattering all their possessions all over the house and then they turned around and said why aren't you yelling at us <laughs> she said i've chosen not to yell at you and they went oh and then they went and picked she said then they went and picked up their things and went away <laughs> oh my goodness wow but how do you convey all of that so that's a you know, testimonial. It, You've got to get that out in the testimonial from that person, and, and yeah, trade but that way. but in a way that um is succinct and because there's a bit of background, you know, it's like it's su there's such gold yes. for her and her family, right? Mm -hmm. But I also see from a marketing perspective or a promotional okay. perspective that that is gold dust right there. You, you could tell that as a story, you know. Yeah, well, um, I guess that's the thing. I I could take the risk of you know, video that little story and yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It just and, people will resonate with you as a person, as the presenter and yeah. the educator. Yeah, in that short story. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. several I ways. I think that that would be quite a good thing to get quite deep into one day. Um, one of these meetings, I put there because I'm just putting down ideas of things that we can. Mm. We'll go on to that in a minute. Um, how to communicate with your particular audience. Yeah. You know, that would be quite a um a neat yeah. episode yeah. on in in itself, wouldn't it? Yeah, how to communicate and, it's, and it's, the different it's, things you can do. Exactly right. And yeah. that's where the intuit my intuitively how I intuitively work with my clients to get a feeling and understanding of what you want. I'm not here to tell you this is how you're going to do it. I don't work like that. I I, I get the picture. Like you've just explained to me what you've explained to me about that one topic. Mm. That just in itself, already my head's going, wow, we could just we could do this, we could do this. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then I come up with suggestions and, mm. and solutions for you to and then you could map it out and follow that same solution, that same scenario on other stories you've got yeah. so yeah and it's about bringing that big picture together the whole mm. you know your vision of what you see would be the way you'd like to put it out there and then mm. we, make it, we make it happen mm. yeah and 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 it's people like michelle like you that do make that happen for people like us <laughs> yeah you know um because these big 
like 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 we said before, these big companies don't work intuitively. They work formulaically. So they plug in a formula, and formulas don't always work out for no. all of us. There's no one size fits all. There never has been. There never will be. Um, particularly when it comes to things like marketing or or you know finding the essence because that's what your brand is. Basically, mm. it's putting your essence, your passion, your you know who you are, right. on on display. Mm. Right. It's, I mean, it's telling I, the story. It's telling yeah, the story. exactly. And, mm. and like um, <laughs> you know, we we've been working on on my logo, haven't we, Michelle? And and it's kind of evolved and evolved and evolved, and <laughs> come to something where we both worked on it. Um and created this uh, what's what's there now, which is which I'll share it again. Um, <clears throat> but that this has been a process, and it doesn't always necessarily happen overnight. You no, know, um, it can be a journey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you know, there's my there's my final, so to speak. And, and and I I I really like it. I think there's also you could do quite a lot with it, but that that will be my logo now, you know, um, with the arc, and it's a, it's quite stylized, um, but that's me, <laughs> simple, People. simple, and and <laughs> you know, <laughs> representational rather than, and, and it's taken quite quite some time to get there but we've got there and I'm quite happy with that now um brand you on, on everything else properly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then there's no way that I could have actually got there I think without Michelle uh, mm. maybe in like four or five years time you know <laughs> but um yeah definitely so Maybe if we, we we could do a thing like that, Michelle, how to communicate with your particular audience. And um, is there anything else that you you particularly would benefit from, Rachel, if, if we're you know in further in further meetings and things like that? What else would you want to know around the whole business marketing, all that sort of thing, or or have more? more in-depth knowledge about? Well, I think, I, you know, um, it's great that you showed your logo, Kelly, because, and we looked at it the other day when we met up, but, mm -hmm. you know, it does without, well, with three words, right, but with few words, it really communicates that sense of, um, I guess it's stewardship that mm. I get about the arc education. It's like, it's like a, a, a safe, like a, the, yeah. the shape of it, it's like a crucible or something. It's like yeah. it's holding it's space. Holding. Yeah, yeah. Or um, you could say uh, from Tao Māori, taonga, like, like precious treasure, treasure, treasure right? Yeah. Um, but it's also that idea of, um, you know, the ark historically was created because there was a flood coming, right? Mm -hmm. And that idea of of um, safeguarding knowledge, safeguarding principles, safeguarding, mm -hmm. but also safeguarding our learners, our children. Um, oh, that all gets communicated to me in that graphic. Yeah. Um, and... Originally, the, the original um, graphic that was designed, or well, I had designed at the beginning of my business, um, kind of communicated a bit about mm. what I'm about, but it's lost its way mm. um, and with various iterations and bits cut off here, bits cut off there. So it's kind of lost any kind of communication, I think, or any power, in any potency, I suppose. Or oh, heart. Yeah, like the like the heart yeah. of what my business is about is certainly not represented on on the current logos and mm. um, 
yeah, and, and I guess for me, just really understanding without becoming a designer, because I don't think I'll ever become a designer, but, um, you know, what? how do you take all of this wordiness that I tend to symbol. have and yeah. represent it graphically? Symbology, yeah. Yeah, the symbology of it. Mm. Um, so I've written that down, symbology. Um, how, how do symbols communicate? Mm. Meaning, I guess that that yeah. could be a really an interesting talk as well. <laughs> well, you know, take if you take the case that we are fundamentally first and foremost graph um visual people. Yes. Humans are very mostly very visual. Um, and, and I think <laughs> particularly in the field of neurodiversity, we're very more visual. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I've been sort of whether I am a word thinker or trained as a word thinker, I'm quite wordy. So how how do you take all of that mm. and create yeah, or concept yes, yeah, conceptualize mm. a visual representation of a set of values and purpose and mm. Mm. and and I'm the other way around. <laughs> yes. You're very visual. <laughs> I'm very visual and um, being dyslexic myself. Um I I think in pictures, totally in pictures. And um, Michelle, it would be interesting to find out, do you think in pictures or words predominantly? I think in, in pictures. Mm. Yeah. I think in, I see the end result before I even start. Yeah. Mm. Actually, I was talking to my husband about it the other day because we had a dental laboratory and he's the Crown and Bridge dental technician. And I, I, I said to him, you know, I talked to a client and already my brain starts ticking, you know, what am I, what am I bringing together? I haven't seen any of their current stuff. And I just start, and I start, and I start seeing the end result. That's just how I, I, I work. And in the middle of the night, I have to get up and have to start writing things down or just, you know, do, you know, start, because it comes to me. It just, just, just naturally mm. comes to me. And it, and mm. it is, it's, yeah, it's a finished result. Mm. It is. He was the same so, with you, doing the shading and the <laughs> doing crowns and visualizing the person. Like he'd do a shade of a person, then he visualizes the finished result. And that's a creative trait. A creative yeah. will see the end result. Mm. It's, a, it's a right brain trait, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, and that's what most neurodiversity is basically is the right brain dominance. And, um, but yeah. we've gone completely off the topic. <laughs> Is there anything else that um, you, <clears throat> you can think of that would be quite an interesting thing to talk about in in these sessions? As, even if it's boring as, <laughs> like some, some businesses. I think people get, um, well, from a marketing perspective, if I could just touch on that a little bit mm. you know you get a bit overwhelmed with what's required mm. Mm. and mm. I think that yes it's not one one fits all scenario in my eyes but you do need systems to mm. okay so mm. and I think that gets a bit overlooked with us um solopreneurs yeah. we don't have mm. the the resources or you know and it's about streamlining and having that you know the the drip feed emails and things like that going forward with, with and the it. processes, yeah, exactly. Processes, yeah. And I think that that's a big area that when we're entrepreneurs, we want to focus on our craft, which is what you should do. Um, mm. but you've got to also build in the background some systems and get that that happening. Mm. And if you don't build those, what happens is that you spend more time doing that stuff rather than doing your craft. Correct. Um, and so actually systems and processes would be a great a great topic to talk about too. Yeah. Um, and for plan. anybody who's, sorry? Plan you plan to fail is the yeah. same. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I used to hate that as a teacher, no. you know. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> And but also on and on the other hand too, if you plan to the point where you have no flexibility or you're not get 
you you also fail because you know there, there has to be there has to be a certain degree of it's freedom where you can respond to something that that isn't expected you know yeah that's yeah. right <laughs> absolutely so for the people who are going to watch this recording i think it would be a great um great idea to if you've got any ideas that you would like to have discussed in these sessions just to put it in the comments below and um, rachel i i said earlier that um m probably for the first few um recordings i'll put them up on the arts education page but um as we go through and we get more people on um it will end up um in the group page the business right. support and inspiration inspiration page and yeah other people will have to watch it live yeah so as soon as i as soon as i can figure out <laughs> How to put it in the in the group and inspiration the, the support and inspiration page <laughs> live from from Zoom. I, I will work it out though. <laughs> Maybe that that would be a really good session too. Actually, how to work Zoom. Yeah. You could take that one, Rachel. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to contribute on that. That is yeah. something I've developed myself in in the last few years. Yeah. You're much more, more proficient on Zoom than I am, so I'll I'll put your name next to that one. All right, <laughs> happy to do that. And and that that's what it's all about. It's about sharing our wisdom. Mm. Right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, some mm. of us are experts, some of us aren't, but together, you know, if we share it and collaborate, I think we can build a great business community and mm. the, the traditional competitive dog eat dog um yeah people. encourage people to succeed instead of mm. yeah yes yeah and, and 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 contributing to that paradigm shift and yeah. that's what i'm here this is what i'm all about is is contributing to that paradigm shift taking people into the next into the next generation, so to speak, you know, of collaboration and working together and compassion. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's other, well, it's not, um, there's other aspects of my Davis life where, where there is that collaboration and it's fabulous, you know, with my mm -hmm. co-presenter and um, it's just a joy and it's like being in a sandpit really working together. It, it's yeah. a fabulous experience. Mm -hmm. And, and, other aspects of my life I'm involved with women's leadership work in Africa and it's always a joy and it's always collaborative and we just bring whatever we have to the table and create absolute miracles and it just seems a bit sticky around business isn't it it's like there's some yeah. other set of rules yeah. seemingly that yeah. um, we have yeah. to compete rather than support when I like I referred someone uh, well, they weren't going to be my client because of their location, but I referred an inquiry to a colleague down in Canterbury last week. And she was overjoyed that I'd referred someone. And I went, oh, that's that's great, but it's also kind of sad that obviously that's not a regular experience of hers. Yeah. Um, but I was like, well, I, you know, other than moving down to Canterbury because it's a whole family thing. Um. Yeah. You know that would that was what's going to serve that prospective client and that family, um, and why wouldn't you do that? And Absolutely. Kelly's Kelly's very generously referred lots of people to me, but it, it's it seems a rare experience, mm. and I think that's sad. Oh, Not rare from Kelly, but rare like <laughs> yeah, um, generally. Generally, mm. yeah. I, I think it's that whole, um, for a very long time, it's that whole neoliberal view of the world, you know, where it's eat or be eaten and you've got to be on top and that rah, 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 you know, um, mentality, which I've actually 
never identified with ever. Um, much to a, a lot of people's jargon. Yeah. I think it's a real masculine mentality. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but there's the feminine affluence needs to come forward more of a, mm. from a compassionate perspective. And I think it is, Michelle. Mm. This is our time. Uh, that that yin energy is definitely coming in. So, I, well, I'm going to. We're we're. I think. Well, we've actually done really well tonight. Thought it was only going to be half an hour. <laughs> it's been more than that. So th I just want to thank both of you really sincerely for coming on. And um, hopefully our conversation will encourage other people to come on next time. Yes. Um, yes. Um, and and these things will grow. I'm pretty sure, you know, that... that um, what what movie was it we said build it they said build it and, and, they, and they will come field of dreams field of dreams that's it so this is this is my field of dreams <laughs> scenario so um I'm pretty sure that this could be a really um useful and remarkable group to yeah explain. definitely absolutely. Thank you very, very much for coming and um, we will hopefully see you next time as well. Um, we'll work out whether it's every second Monday of the month or whether it's every last Monday of the month, but I think every second Monday is quite a good, mm. quite a good one to go for. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for much. hosting, Kelly. Lovely to meet you, Michelle. I'll be in touch. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you.